Hello youth, it's time for some more trigonometry. So we are on 6.2, looking at some trig ratios. Um, the first thing we'll point out here is there are the primary trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. This is nothing new, just a quick refresher of what you know. Now so here's something you might not know. There are reciprocal trig ratios. They're called cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And they work just like this. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, while cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So what you do is you just take opposite and hypotenuse and you flip them, and you get a brand new trig ratio. Same thing is done with cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse becomes hypotenuse over adjacent, and we call that secant. Tan is the same thing. That's called cotangent. So there's nothing really uh, for me to explain about that other than there are three other trig ratios, and you just got to know what they are. Now, the actual use for these, they'll, uh, they'll have some uses as we go on. Uh, they're not really incredibly useful for a lot of basic things, um, but they will have the odd, uh, odd use for, for some stuff. Um, one thing I just want to point out here, this, is, uh, this always confused me for a very long time. Um, tangent and cotangent really make a lot of sense. I mean, they both have tangent in them. Uh, but secant and cosecant versus sine and cosine. So one thing to notice here is sine starts with an S and its corresponding reciprocal ratio starts with a C. So sine and cosecant. Whereas cosine here corresponds with secant. So sine becomes cosecant and cosine becomes secant. So do the best uh, you can to remember that. Uh, although sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes I get asked if a student can remember the uh, corresponding reciprocal ratio for sine. And usually I have to tell, uh, tell someone else that the student's having a hard time remembering it. And then they say, are you sure? And I say, of course you can't. <laughs> I'll work on that joke. Maybe I should do a take two next time. Anyway, okay, so there we go. We're moving on. Okay, so reciprocal trig ratios are completely unrelated to inverse trig functions. So here's a little thing for you here. Um, inverse functions are used to find angles, and they're written as like sine to the negative one, uh, whereas cosecant is actually one divided by sine, which is sine of the angle to the negative one. So this notation here, this is really subtle but important. This notation here and this notation here are completely different. Okay, so just don't get this confused. These reciprocal functions are not inverse functions. They are uh, just one divided by. Now if you're sitting there scratching your head going, okay, well, I thought sine squared of theta was equal to sine of theta all squared. This is actually a true statement, but this is not equal to this. So it's a little weird, it's a little confusing, they are just different notations. And the fact that we use a little negative one up here really actually is quite problematic. And uh, what a lot of people do actually is they don't even ever use this notation. I know it's on your calculators, but a better notation would just be to call arc sine or arc cotangent or whatever. Anyway, just, uh, just be aware. The notation is a little bit funny. Nothing else for me to say about that. Okay, so example number one, use the triangle below to determine the value of sine A, cosecant B, and cotan A. Okay, so here's a little bit of a memory test here. If you need a helpful mnemonic, I mean, we all know so ka toa right? Well, it turns out that if you're doing the, uh, the reciprocal ratio, well, let's see, so sine uh, becomes cosecant, and you switch the uh, O and the H to be H and O. So it becomes cho, uh, secant, h over a, sha, and cotan uh, is adjacent over opposite. So there we go. Okay, so cho sha cow. I don't know if that doesn't make any sense. So kato becomes cho sha cow, if you need something else remembering. Okay, so sine a, we know this is opposite over hypotenuse. So if someone was asking you to figure out sine a, what they're just saying is 
here is A, and what we're doing is we're getting the opposite side and we're combining it by the hypotenuse. People who recognize this triangle actually might recognize this as the 5, 12, 13, or you can use Pythagoras to solve for this. This will be uh, the square root of 13 squared minus 12 squared. That actually turns out to be exactly 5. So yes, you might have to do a little bit of work to figure that out, but the sign A, uh, the ratio is 5 over 13. Okay. And no, we're not asking for the angle A, we're just asking for sine of A, which is a ratio. Okay, cosecant B. So what is cosecant? Cosecant uh, is 1 over sine, so that is actually hypotenuse over opposite. Or, if you're having trouble remembering, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, it's the cho. Okay, so this is simple. This is just 13 over, what's the opposite side from angle B? It's 12, so 13 over 12 would be cosecant of B. And cotan A. Okay, so normally tan is opposite over adjacent, so this is adjacent over opposite. And that would be, let's see, so from the point of view of A, I'm drawing too much stuff all over here. But from the point of view of A, the opposite side is 5 and the adjacent is 12, so this would be 12 over 5. All right. Now, if you're sitting there wondering where, so looking at the calculator up here, there's sine, cosine, and tan. Where is cosecant, secant, and cotangent? They don't exist. There is no button for them. So we'll look at how we work that out on the calculator when we need to later on. Okay, so a little bit of a shift in gears here. So we're just going to quickly review reference angles because we're going to have to use this to do all sorts of solving and stuff. So in grade 11, uh, you should have learned a lot about the reference angle here. This is a quick little review. The reference angle is the angle measured between the closest x-axis and the terminal arm. So reference angles are always between 0 and 90 degrees. In the example below, we've got the closest x-axis, and we've got the terminal arm here. And we've got the angle in between, which is 30 degrees, so that's my reference angle. If I put an angle down here, I might have a reference angle of, I don't know, that looks like about 60 degrees. If I put an angle uh, over here, maybe the reference angle is like 80 degrees. Uh, if I put something up here, the reference angle might be like 70 degrees. Uh, you never, ever, ever measure reference angles, uh, you know, like that. In between the y-axis and the terminal arm, you don't do that. Okay, so the whole deal, the whole important thing about reference angles is we must understand that standard position angles, standard position, remember, goes from the uh, positive x-axis to wherever they're going, that share the same reference angle have the same value. The sign might be different, but the number will be the same. So sine of 30 degrees and sine of 150 degrees are actually the exact same value because they both share a 30 degree reference angle. And just another thing you might remember from last year, a quick little review here, the sign of all the different uh, trig ratios in what quadrant is summarized by this little graphic. I like to use the mnemonic, all students take calculus. That's why you're taking pre-calc, right? So all of the trig ratios, all three of them are positive. In quadrant two, only sine is positive. In quadrant three, only tan is positive. And in quadrant four, only cosine is positive. Now, how does this uh, relate to the reciprocal ratios? It's very simple. This is also the reciprocal ratio. Um, for this one, it's going to be cos whoops, cosecant. This one will be cotan. And then this one will be secant. Because all the difference is, is you're going 1 divided by cos or 1 divided by tan. So it's not going to change the sign. So the reciprocal ratios that correspond uh, are positive in the same quadrants as their original primary ratios. Okay, special angles. So we've kind of talked about this before, just a quick little summary here. Uh, every, whenever possible, you should use special triangles to find exact values. And when I say exact values, I mean like radical values. So square roots, don't do decimal approximations. Um, we saw this before in the introductory video, so I'm not going to look at this too much. I'll just say all the values on this graphic right here, you got to get them memorized. And it, uh, I don't think it should take too long to memorize these, like 30 degrees is pi over 6, and then uh, this is that unit circle again, right? So that um, you'll have like sine is uh, 1 over 2, 
and cosine through 3 over 2. Uh, you will definitely be forgiven if you have trouble, you know, getting a real good understanding of what 7 pi over 6 is and knowing that's 210. You should be able to figure it out, but if you don't know it instantly, that's okay. Uh, some really common ones that you should really, you know, maybe stick in your brain. 2 pi over 3 seems to come up an awful lot. Um, yes, yeah, so I see 5 pi over 4 a lot for whatever reason. I mean, you see all just be aware. Okay, anyway, there you go. That's there. You can go back and have a look at it if you ever forget anything. Okay, so in example two, determine the reference angle of each angle given, then determine the exact value. So what I'm doing here is we're just having a basic cookie cutter question. I'm going to switch between uh, degrees and radians just so we get used to thinking in terms of both of them. So if you're going to determine the reference angle of this angle here, uh, what you can do is you can just think, okay, here's a rough sketch. Remember, we're talking about degrees, so there's 0, 9, 180, there's 270, and so on. 135 is over here. Now, if you want to know the exact reference angle, there's a formula for this. So in quadrant 2, the reference angle is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus the actual angle. So in this case, it's 180 minus 135 gives us a 45 degree reference angle. Uh, there's a similar kind of formula in quadrant three and in quadrant four and all that, and uh, it's not really too tricky. I mean, most of this is common sense. We'll, uh, we'll use those as they sort of pop up. Okay, so uh, let's see. What we do here is we want to figure out, so this is actually equal to, so we can say sine of 135 is actually the same value as sine of 45, and that's pretty easy. What is sine of 45? That is an exact value. We should recognize that from up here. We should see that 45 has some exact values in terms of radicals. So what we would do, and this is what I would do. I don't, I don't have this little circle here memorized. That's ridiculous. What I would do is I would quickly sketch the special triangle that corresponds with it. Sketch it mentally in my head. I like this, the 1, 1 through 2. So sine of 45 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and that's, of course, equal to 1 over root 2. Now, the one thing you have to do, remember that when you get this, you also got to think, okay, I know sine of 135 and sine of 45 are the same number, but is it positive or negative? So what quadrant is this in? This is in quadrant 2. So therefore, we can say that sine of 135 equals a positive quantity because all students take calculus. Sine is positive in quadrant 2. So 1 over root 2, ta-da, very good, we're done. Some people will say, shouldn't I rationalize that to be root 2 over 2? I personally don't care. I actually would prefer not to do that. I think it's an unnecessary step. Okay, so next one here. Uh, I don't know why I put equal sign. What is negative 3 pi over 4? So when you're sketching that, negative means you're going in this direction. 3 pi over 4, remember here's pi, or negative pi. Here's negative pi over 2. And here's negative 3 pi over 2. So where is negative 3 pi over 4 going to situate itself? It's going to be right about here. Because remember, this is 4 pi over 4. So we're 3 quarters of the way to 180 degree rotation. So what this angle in here, the reference angle, this one here, you can actually figure out that the reference angle. Now this is where I, I wrote a little formula up here. I'm not even going to write the formula because I think it's almost more confusing to do with a formula. Use a little common sense. If we've got an angle of 3 pi over 4 and we're going to negative pi, which is 4 pi over 4, how far away am I? It's simple. It's just pi over 4. And it's not negative pi over 4 because reference angles are always positive. Remember up in the notes we said this right here. Where's my cursor? There it is. Okay, reference angles are always between 0 and 90 degrees, so they're always positive. Okay, so the reference angle is pi over 4, so what I have to do now is I just got to figure out cosine of pi over 4. Instead of working out negative 3 pi over 4, I can use a simple reference angle. So what is pi over 4? Hey, that's the same triangle I just drew, except I'm going to redraw it now with the same lengths, but 
the angles inside are pi over 4, and you should be able to equate 45 degrees to pi over 4, uh, certainly eventually, if not already. Okay, so this is adjacent over, I guess I'll write that step, this is adjacent over hypotenuse, because it's cosine, which means it's 1 over root 2. Now here's the thing, what quadrant is the actual original angle in? This is in quadrant 3. Therefore, cosine is negative in quadrant 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to write negative 1 over root 2. And that's my answer. So we're always using the reference angle just to work out the actual value of the fraction. Uh, but you've got to use the quadrants to work out whether it's positive or negative. Okay, cotan of negative 390. All right, so this one's now uh, using one of them inverse trig ratios. So what you have to do, first of all, is you've got to figure out where is negative 390. We're spinning negative, we're doing a full rotation, and then we're coming around, right, that's 360, so we're negative 360, and we're coming around, we went 30 degrees past. So my reference angle equals 30 degrees. So this is the same as cotan, whoops, cotan of 30. Now what the heck is cotan of 30 degrees? So cotan is, uh, let's see, tan is opposite over adjacent, so this is adjacent over opposite. So what you've got to do is you've got to sketch out your special triangle here somewhere. Uh, I want the one with a 30 degree angle, so it's this guy. Uh, this is 1, this is 2, and this is root 3. Again, those values are just memorized. So from a 30 degree angle, the adjacent side is the root 3, and the opposite side is the 1. So this is root 3 over 1. Now, what quadrant is this in? This is in quadrant 4, I can see here. So all students take calculus. But cotan is the tan quadrant. Okay, so in quadrant four, cotan is negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our value and we're going to go and we're going to stick a negative root. Ta-da. Okay, if you haven't tried a single one of these, you might want to pause the video and do it right now. All right, so the cosecant here is, okay, well, let's, let's draw an angle first. Keep my equal sign there. What is 19 pi over 6? Oh, my good Lord. Okay, so this is my mental thought train here. Okay, 12 pi over 6 is equal to 2 pi equals 1 rotation. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. So what we've done is we've gone in the positive direction. We've done a full rotation, which is 2 pi. And then we've got to go 7 pi over 6, uh, which is going a little past pi and going about there. All right, so this is 7 pi over 6, which uh, now this is pi, so that's like 6 pi over 6. So we are pi over 6 beyond that x-axis. So that is my reference angle. It takes a little bit of getting used to, to do that. So what we do is we say this is the same as cosecant of pi over 6. And what we do is then we say, all right, well, cosecant is the reciprocal to sine. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is hypotenuse over opposite. So what we got is, uh, let's see, we need to figure out our triangle. So the special triangle here. This little sliver guy down here, this is the small angle, which is pi over 6, which corresponds to 30 degrees. So this is just like the last example. So the hypotenuse is 2, and the opposite is 1. So what we can do is we can say it's got a value of 2 over 1, and it's in quadrant 3. Uh, okay, so in quadrant 3, and we can say that sine, which is what cosecant relates to, sine is negative in quadrant 3. So this becomes negative 2. Okay, so we've been doing a bunch of stuff. We haven't bothered checking anything on our calculator. Maybe it's a good time to do that. Let's put it in radian mode.
and then let's just check. So how do you actually check this on your calculator? There is no cosecant button. But what we can do is we can go 1 divided by sine, which is exactly uh, the same thing as cosecant. So we're going to go 19 pi, and then we're going to divide it by 6. Close that up. And when I push this, I should get negative 2. Ta-da! Okay, so there we go. Feeling good. I got a little nervous there. Okay, last one. Secant of negative 3 pi. All right, so if we're going to draw this bad boy, we're going negative, so we're spinning in this direction. This is one full rotation, so that's negative 2 pi. Then we're going all the way over here. So this is negative 3 pi. Negative pi, negative 3 pi, it actually corresponds to both. So this is an interesting one. This is one where my terminal arm is lying flat there. So what we would do is, in this case, we would say this is the same as secant of 0. Because there is uh, no reference angle. So it's got a reference angle of 0. So this is the same as... Uh, oh, okay, so secant is the opposite uh, of, or I should say the reciprocal, of cosine. So it's not adjacent over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over adjacent. So this is kind of weird. This gets people a little bit. Uh, okay, so what is the length of the hypotenuse? I actually don't really know, but I do know one thing for sure. The length of the hypotenuse is, we'll call it x. What's the length of the adjacent side? Well, it turns out the length of the adjacent side is the same length, which is also x. This is like saying x over x, which is like saying 1. So secant of 0 should be equal to 1. Now, if you don't really like that way of thinking about it, you may have also seen this one. Now, I know you definitely have, because in the beginning we looked at this, and I know in grade 11, I at least make my uh, students learn this, uh, cosine. So the cosine graph looks like this. That. And this corresponds with pi, or 180 degrees, and this corresponds with 360, or 2 pi. And then this one goes down like that, which will be 540, or 3 pi. Now I know we are negative 3 pi, so we could go in the opposite direction as well. And we could go like this, and we go, although you see that cosine isn't even function and has symmetry, but there's negative 3 pi. We can actually see the value corresponds with negative 1. So that's negative 3 pi comma negative 1. So how did I know this should not be 1, but this should actually be negative 1? Uh, well, what quadrant are we in? We're not in a quadrant. You can't use ASTC, but you can use a little bit of rationale. The hypotenuse is always, always a positive quantity. Now, the adjacent can be negative. So in this case, the adjacent should have been negative x because it's pointing to the left. So this really should have been expressed as x over negative x, which is equal to negative 1. So that would have been a good thing to do in the beginning. But look at that. I just got so excited. You might also make the argument that if the terminal arm is between sine and tan here, uh, where cosine is negative in quadrants two and three, it should be negative you know, somewhere in between as well. That would be a fair thing to do. Anyway, I actually really like the squiggly wave graph here. Uh, I think when you're doing values like 90 degrees, you know, pi over 2, I think uh, using a graph like this is actually much more helpful. It's not very useful for finding you know, something like cosine of 60, because it'll be like here, and we'll just go, I don't know what that value is, but it is definitely useful for things like 180, 360, and even 90 degrees or something. Okay, example three, solve exactly. So when you see solve exactly, you are looking for a radical uh, value. So in this case, when you see one over root three, does that make your brain kind of light up with fireworks about special triangles, and it definitely should. So what we would do is when we're looking at this, we would instantly go, okay, well, this is a special triangle because when I see ones, twos, and threes, uh, there's a very good chance we've got a special triangle going on. So in this case, what do we got? We got the one 
the two of the root three triangle. And I can see that this is the opposite, and this would be the adjacent, because we're talking about tan. So the angle we're talking about will be this guy right here, which will be theta, because one is opposite to it, and uh, root three is adjacent. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by going the reference angle equals. Now, if you're using a calculator, there's a way of doing this. That will actually be part two of the video. We're not going to deal with that right now. But if you're using special triangles, you can actually avoid the nastiness of the negative sign and all that. So we're just going to figure out the reference angle here. We know by memory it's pi over 6. So the reference angle is pi over 6. Now, because tan is negative, the quantity is negative. We ignore the negative when we're getting the reference angle, but it does uh, matter for the sign. So this could be in what quadrants? 10 is negative in quadrants. All students take calculus. So 10 is negative here and here. So this means it's in either quadrant 2 or it's in quadrant 4. So what we can say here is we can have an angle that's in quadrant 2 or quadrant 4 and it's got a reference angle of pi over 6. We also have this little bugger over here. So you might have done questions like this in grade 11. Uh, chances are you probably didn't see this uh, domain restriction change too much, but you know it's grade 12 so we're going to do it. And if you have seen the domain restriction change a whole bunch, great. So because theta is sandwiched between negative pi and pi, that means we can go and we can spin in this direction and we could get a pi over 6 reference angle, but we cannot spin further than that because that would go past, uh, I was just supposed to say capital pi, that would be positive pi, that'd be too far. But we can go in the negative direction up to negative pi. So what we can do is we can spin this way and we don't have to spin very far and we'll actually find we get the pi over 6 reference angle quadrant 4. So those are my two standard position angles. So what I like to do here, and I'm going to execute this, is I like to split this up into basically two questions, quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So in quadrant 2, theta equals, and the way we're going to work out theta is we're going to go 180 degrees, we're going to subtract the reference angle. That's just a general formula that you can always use in quadrant two. So that will be 180, except we're not talking about degrees, we're talking about radians. So I really should call this pi, pi minus reference angle. So this will be pi, oh, my brain just definitely stopped working for a sec. This will be pi minus pi over six. So that's five pi over six. Ta-da. And in quadrant four, the angle will be, okay, so this one's a little trickier because formulas get a little sketchy with the negative angles, but you know what, you can, you can honestly just see it. Uh, you can see that we dip down um, the reference angle below. So th it's the negative version of the reference angle here. That's not a formula you can always, always write. Usually you will write something to the effect of 360 minus the reference angle, but we can just see with a negative angle there. Anyway, we can see that we've got an angle of negative pi over 6. I'm not a big fan of formulas for figuring out the angles. I think you want to draw the picture and you want to just use a little common sense. If you try and memorize a formula for every quadrant, uh, you're going to get mixed up. Okay, and if we just want to check our work, we can do that real quick. We can go, so if I went 10 of 5 pi divided by 6, I'm going to get negative 5.77. Well, that turns out to be exactly what 1 divided by the root of 3 is. And of course, it's negative. So that checks out, and we could also do the same thing where we can go tan of, I'm not going to do this every time, but I'll just do it here, tan of pi divided by 6, and we get ourselves negative 5.7. So cool means, okay? So we got that, we got it done. Okay, cosecant. Uh, equals uh, cosine, yeah, yeah, words. Okay, cosecant theta equals negative root 2, and we've got this group domain restriction. So first of all, 
is negative root 2 something that we can solve with a special triangle? So remember, cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, so it's hypotenuse over opposite. So when you see this, you should actually think of it as root 2 over 1. So there's your hypotenuse, and there's your opposite. Does this look like something you can solve? And it absolutely is. So you've got this bad boy here, root the 1 root 2. There's your uh, right angle in there. Okay, so this angle in here, uh, we know is pi over 4, just from memory. So we can say that theta reference equals pi over 4. The fact that we've got a negative sign in here, uh, a, S, T, C, it's negative, so sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4, so this tells us it's in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So what we would do is we draw a, okay, now we're actually going to have to be a little bit careful here, because we, can, we can't have anything larger than pi, so I cannot spin all the way around like that, that would be farther than pi. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to spin in this direction to get to it. We can also have a quadrant 4 angle, which maybe I'll use a different color for because it's getting kind of messy. We can also have a quadrant 4 angle where we can spin like that. So we can see that that's a negative pi over 4 angle. We don't even have to do anything really complicated to get there. And we can see that this here is a negative 3 pi over 4 angle. Now there's one other thing you got to think about here. We can go all the way to negative 3 pi, which means we can do a full rotation and a half. So this, negative 3 pi, this is 1.5 rotations which means that we can do a full spin, and we can come back around there. And we can even do a full spin. Maybe do I have a different color? We do a full spin, and we can come back around there. Okay, so that's getting real messy here, and I'm not really loving that. But what we can do is maybe I'll just draw a second picture here. Uh, or we can even just say, maybe I'll just use green for this plus one rotation. And same with this, plus one rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure this all out. So in quadrant three, we're going to say the angle equals negative uh, three pi over four and negative three pi over four plus a negative 2 pi, right? Because that's one rotation. So that's equal to, uh, okay, let's see here. So that's negative uh, 8 pi over 4. So that's equal to negative 11 pi over 4. Okay, so we were able to go down to negative 3 pi, which would be negative 12 pi over 4, so we're still good. So we actually have two answers, and those are just my two answers in quadrant three. So that's my uh, single rotation, and that's when I add one full rotation. And again, that's the coterminal angle business kind of coming up here. Okay, so quadrant four, what we can see is one of our angles was easy. It was negative pi over four, and we've got negative pi over four plus a negative rotation, so that becomes uh, negative pi over 4 minus uh, 8 pi over 4, so that's also negative 9 pi over 4. So there we go. Okay, so we wind up having four answers. One question, four answers. It's a, it's a miracle. <laughs> okay, so there's all my uh, possible ang uh, yeah, angles. Uh, you may consider at the end it's not bad to just say theta, so therefore theta can be, and if you put them in ascending order, that's always a nice touch. So negative 11 pi over 4, negative 9 pi over 4. You don't necessarily absolutely have to do this, but it's, it's good to do it. It's a little prettier, and it makes life a lot easier for people like me who have to sit there and try and figure out what the answers are sometimes. Okay, last one here, and this, uh, oh boy, we got another example. Okay, well, we'll do this one pretty quick. Okay, so secant theta. Secant is 1 over cos, 
So that is uh, hypotenuse over adjacent. So there's the hypotenuse, there's the adjacent. We can see that it's got a positive sign, so cosine is positive, quadrant is positive, quadrant is four. Um, this looks like it's a reference to my special triangle with the one, the root three, and the two. And uh, let's see, so the hypotenuse is two, the adjacent is three, so we got to be talking about this bad boy. We know that this is a prime over six. So we can say the reference angle is pi over six. Now, this is where I would definitely always sketch up the Cartesian coordinate grid. Uh, we are in quadrants one and quadrants four, and we have a pi over six reference angle. So we're there. And we're there. So the domain restriction says theta has to be greater than pi over two, but less than three pi over two. Okay, so here's pi over two. So we're allowed to spin this way, but we've got to go past pi over two, but we cannot go to three pi over two, which means we have a little bit of an issue. The domain here basically tells us we're stuck in these quadrants. This is the domain pi over 2, theta is less than 3 pi over 2. But we know our answers would have to be in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So what's our result here? The result is very simple. Therefore, there are no solutions. Okay, so our reference angles must be in quadrant one and quadrant four, but our domain is in quadrant two and quadrant three only. So we have a bit of a discrepancy there. We have no solutions. There are solutions, but just not in that domain. Well, that was fun. Okay, last one. If cosecant theta equals negative three for uh, negative 90, they just said between those values, determine the exact values of the other five trig ratios. Okay, this is just a little bit of a different question. By the way, example three is kind of like the, the meat and potatoes of this lesson. That's what most questions are, but this one's just a little bit different. So let's just do this one real quick here. Okay, so cosecant is one over sine, which is hypotenuse over uh, opposite. So when I see negative three, remember that's the same as negative three over one. That's a general thing you're going to want to do here. Okay, so hypotenuse over opposite is negative three over one. Now, is this a special triangle? No, and in fact, I gotta sort of think about this a little bit. So what we have here is we've got a hypotenuse of three and an opposite of one. So that's probably gonna look something like this. Now, it's negative three, which means that this is definitely in quadrant. I still need to do this sometimes. A S T C. I should be able to do it in my head, but I need to do it like this sometimes. Okay, so it's uh, it's sine, so it's in quadrant three and quadrant four. Okay, so the way I drew this is actually not the way I would draw it. So it could be oh, uh, and and we have this. Okay, so we're stuck between ninety and we're stuck between negative ninety. Holy smokes! Okay, so we can go anywhere here, but we can't go anywhere further. So in quadrant three, quadrant four. Only quadrant four is in the domain. So what I can determine, so all these clues, there's three pieces of info with this type of question, right? You're given the number, so the actual ratio, so three over one. You're given that it's negative, which tells you it's in uh, two out of the four quadrants, but then the domain restriction could even restrict it further. The only possible quadrant, the only quadrant, Right? That satisfies everything that satisfies the conditions is quadrant four, is Q4. Am my writing is getting just awful there. Okay, so anyway, we're stuck here. Boom, boom, there's your three. And this side will actually be negative one because it's the Y direction that's pointing down. Cool. Okay, so we've done that work.
now determine the exact values of the other five trig ratios. We've got it narrowed down to quadrant four only. So what we can do is we can therefore uh, say, well, let's figure out this side right here. Now, if you're good at math and you do this in your head, you can do Pythagoras, you go three squared minus one squared. This is going to be root of eight. Okay, so this, by the way, I just did in my head because it's not that gosh darn hard. Um, we work this out using Pythagoras. Okay, so what we just have to do now is we just have to figure out the values of all the other five trig ratios. So we've got sine of theta, we've got cosine of theta, we've got tan of theta, we've got uh, secant of theta, we've got cosecant, and then we've got cotan. So these are the other five. And this is not really hard. Once you've done all this work, you just got to put it in. Anyway, so remember sine is O over H. This is A over H. This is O over A. Secant is the opposite of cosine, so it's H over A, and then cotan is the opposite of tan, so it's A over O. So opposite over hypotenuse uh, will be negative 1 over 3. Adjacent over hypotenuse will be root 8 over 3. And it's positive root 8 because it's pointing in the positive x direction. Opposite over adjacent will be negative 1 over root 8. Uh, secant will be 3 over root 8. And then cotan will be adjacent over opposite, which would be root 8 over negative 1. So there you go. That's, that's that. Those are the other five trig ratios. Exact values means we didn't use decimals. We just used that square root of 8. Okay. Well, that's it for now. There is a whole other part, but we're going to deal with that next because we're going to talk about calculators and how they do things because calculators are their own kettlefish. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you on the next part.